plastic. A material synthetically created by humans to be a durable and effective material used for a variety of purposes. The chemist who first created artificial plastic could never have foreseen the disastrous effects it would have on the world, including people, wildlife, and the earth itself. With the amount of plastic we use today, one might think it has always been around. In fact, the first artificial plastic was created in 1909, a little over a century ago. Before then, scientists were using natural plastics such as substances from insects or trees and rubber. These materials were modified into something more useful industrially. However, these efforts were not always successful. Natural plastics were not always as susceptible to manipulation and were not as readily available. But have no fear, because chemist Leo Hendrik Baekeland created the first fully synthetic plastic, a type of resin in 1909. This was the first major catalyst into research on synthesizing large polymers, and by 1937, companies had patented polyesterine, polyvinyl chloride, polypoxide, and polyurethane, all plastics used ubiquitously today. After World War II, the use of plastics exploded, with the use of plastic beginning in the textile industry, packaging, electronics, and the infamous plastic bottle. Since 1976, plastic has been the most used material in the world. Because of plastic's utility, its global production has doubled about every decade. The amount of plastics produced since 1950 has measured at about 9.2 billion tons. Plastic has radically changed nearly every industry in the world because it is cheap and durable. However, it has also exponentially sped up the decline of our planet. It is clear from these images that there is a lot of plastic in the world. Part of the problem is plastic hasn't been around long enough for scientists to truly be able to know how long it will take for it to biodegrade. Scientists do know that the breakdown of plastics will be a very long time, since plastics were made with the intention of being durable. For example, they are chemical and light resistant. Because synthetic plastics are not an organic material, they aren't easily broken down and consumed by microorganisms. Plastic, plastic, plastic. What are plastics? Plastic is actually a polymer, or a large chain of molecules made by connecting smaller molecules together using organic materials mostly derived from petroleum, which presents another problem entirely since the production of plastic alone requires lots of oil extraction. Because plastic is a tough material, it involves a complicated process to manufacture. Workers can be exposed to vinyl chloride vapor, which is a toxic substance. The process once used to make plastic involved the use of another toxic chemical, phosgene, which causes harm to workers as well as the environment. If the impact the amount of waste produced could have on the lifespan of our Earth is not enough to prompt some to care about the amount of plastic we use, perhaps the effect it has on animals, including humans, will provide an incentive to change our habits. One of the most common presentations of plastic and its effects in wildlife is its presence in marine environments. There are 46,000 pieces of plastic litter for every square mile of the ocean. This visual is most striking in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. This patch of garbage floating in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California is made of mostly plastic litter and is twice the size of the state of Texas. This garbage patch was formed within the last half century as plastic becomes more and more prevalent in daily use. All of this plastic leads to the death of at least a million birds and 100,000 marine mammals and turtles every year. Though plastic appears as a magical material that provides efficiency and convenience to our everyday lives, it can actually cause harm to people. Many plastic products have potentially harmful chemicals added to them in order to improve the product's performance, including flame retardants, antioxidants, and antimicrobials. These chemicals can be transferred directly to humans in using the plastics, with two common concerns being BPA and PBDE. Even with directly using a plastic product, people inadvertently consume millions of microplastics every year. We've already seen what the consumption of large amounts of plastics can do to marine animals. To provide a more focused view on the plastic problem, we can examine one common use of plastic, the plastic bag. Americans discard 100 billion plastic bags a year after using them a singular time for something as simple as carrying a bottle of water home from a convenience store. There's an important word, convenience. The United States runs on convenience culture and the plastic bag only fuels it. Those 100 billion plastic bags I mentioned is equivalent to 12 million barrels of oil. 
Many people think that recycling is a simple solution to help balance the volume of plastic we use, but the reality is recycling is extremely difficult and doesn't have a large effect on the volume of existing plastic in the long run. In the United States, only 2% of single-use plastic bags are recycled properly because they are very difficult to process in typical recycling plants. This graphic shows the large percentage of the total plastic successfully recycled globally. In an average year, only about 9% of the total plastic in the U.S. is recycled. Not only is plastic, specifically the plastic bag, difficult to recycle, it is not economically beneficial either, which makes it difficult to prompt companies to participate. There has also been research into making biodegradable plastic in an attempt to counter the lack of recycling. Some types of plastic will degrade in direct sunlight after a long period of time because of the light interactions with the chemical bonds, so chemists want to make more plastics that follow this pattern. There have also been experiments with plastic-eating bacteria. Converting to biodegradable plastic is very far off, however, since it is obviously difficult to go against the original nature of plastic and it is expensive to conduct this research. We're in the midst of a plastic pandemic, similar to another global issue, the COVID-19 virus. Many people worry about possible long-term effects of contracting the virus, which are unknown since the virus has existed for less than two years. The plastic pandemic, on the other hand, began 100 years ago when the first synthetic plastic was created, and we are now dependent on it. We don't truly know the extent of what could happen if we don't reduce our use of this addicting material. The problems it has already caused are not going away anytime soon unless people prioritize the need to reduce our plastic consumption and make a concerted effort to do so. If it is continually ignored, our planet will drown in plastic and we will go down with it.